Welcome everyone to uh, MinRoll in SharePoint 2016. Today we're going over a SharePoint 2016 feature called MinRoll. And the goal of today's session will be to provide unique scenarios, benefits, and risks of using MinRoll in your potential SharePoint 2016 implementation. So just to introduce myself really quick, uh, my name is Roy Polverosa. Um, I'm the Managed Services and Support Manager at Imaginet. I've been with the company for about six years now and have spent the last few years architecting and deploying SharePoint solutions. All right, in uh, today's agenda, uh, we'll be going over what is the new MinRoll configuration and capability and what does it mean for your SharePoint 2016 farm? How does MinRoll impact design, implementation, and the maintenance of SharePoint 2016? And we'll also be going over the different SharePoint server roles that make up MinRoll, the benefits, the different MinRoll topologies, MinRoll administration, and opting out of MinRoll. So as you may know, Microsoft has been operating Office 365 for a while now, including SharePoint Online. They've taken what they've learned from operating SharePoint Online on an internet scale and embedded those lessons learned as features in SharePoint 2016, one of those features being MinRoll. So what is MinRoll? It's an exclusive feature to SharePoint 2016. Administrators can now define a server's role in the farm topology when a new farm is created or when a server is added to an existing farm. SharePoint automatically configures the services on each server based on the server role specified and optimizes performance of the farm based on the topology. All right, so earlier I mentioned server roles. Uh, so MinRoll actually is made up of six different SharePoint server roles. The first role would be the front end, uh, service applications and components that serve user requests uh, belong to this role. And this server is actually optimized for low latency. So services such as app management and business data connectivity would run on this server role. Next would be the application server. So the server is actually optimized for high throughput uh, service applications that serve backend tasks, such as the secure store and user profile service would belong to this server role. Next, we have the distributed cache. This one's pretty straightforward. Any service applications and components that are required for a distributed cache belong on the distributed cache server. So next we have the search server role. Any service applications and components required for search belong to this server role. The custom server role, so any service applications, services, and components that don't integrate with MinRoll belong in this role. Similar to previous versions of SharePoint, the farm admin has full control over which services can run, and MinRoll has no control over uh, those services. And lastly, we have the single server farm. So any service applications and components required to run a single machine farm would go here. And it's really meant for development, testing, and maybe very limited production use. And unlike other versions of SharePoint, SharePoint 2016 does not include the SQL Server installation media, so you'll have to install SQL separately. So how does it work? So when you define a role, SharePoint starts a base set of services. It also detects which additional services have been enabled in the farm and starts the appropriate services associated with that role. For example, if you configure a new search server in your existing 2016 farm, as soon as you define that role, SharePoint will detect other search servers in the farm and copy the configuration for you. And as you create and delete service applications, or as you disable and enable services, MinRoll starts and stops service instances in the farm for you. So next we'll be going over the benefits of using MinRoll in your SharePoint 2016 farm. So what does this mean? It means simpler deployments. Admins don't have to worry about which services have been enabled on which SharePoint servers. By leveraging a template type deployment, you can reduce the risk of misconfigurations during installation and you can focus more on what functionality to enable in your farm and let SharePoint take care of the rest. So this also means improved performance and reliability. Uh, Microsoft has been operating SharePoint Online since 2011 and has analyzed key performance characteristics of operating SharePoint at an internet scale. So SharePoint services have been optimized for the mineral topology based on that analysis. So that all that means is the service application load balancer now services requests from the local service instance instead of going across the farm to another server. So this also means simpler capacity planning and farm scalability. In SharePoint 2016, Microsoft will be basing all of their capacity planning on the MinRoll topology. So if you want to leverage more predictable capacity planning guidance from Microsoft, it's actually recommended to deploy a farm based on the MinRoll topology. And as your SharePoint needs grow, you can easily add more servers to the farm and SharePoint will automatic automatically configure the servers for you. So far, we've talked about what MinRoll is, the benefits, roles, and how it works. Now we'll talk about the topology changes that MinRoll introduces in a SharePoint 2016 environment. So in a typical SharePoint 2013 topology, you'll have a pair of web front ends in a load balance set. 
two application servers, one running central admin and search, and another possibly running user profile service. And then you would have your SQL servers, possibly in a always on availability group. So it, SharePoint administrators would manually configure services on each server to fit these roles. And as features and services are added, administrators have to determine where these components should run based on best practices, current server load, and et cetera. So here's the SharePoint 2016 minimum min role topology. So the supported minimum configuration requires a server with each role. So that would mean one front end, a distributed cache server, an application server, a search server, and a SQL server. So if you include SQL, that's at least five servers required for min role. Uh, and as you can see, the minimum configuration does not have any resiliency. So there's lots of single points of failure. So who would use an environment like this? It's really ideal for a dev or test environment or possibly a smaller organization. Next, we'll be going over the highly available SharePoint 2016 MinRoll topology. So in this topology, you actually need two of each server is recommended. So that means two web front ends load balanced, two application servers, two search servers. And for distributed cache, uh, you actually need three servers in a cluster quorum. And if you add SQL uh, availability groups to achieve high, high availability uh, in the SQL layer, you'll get a total of potentially 11 servers. And if you include Office Online servers, uh, you'll actually need two of them, which will bump the total to 13. So that's a lot of infrastructure, really ideal for larger deployments who require high availability. And you'll also have to consider other things like hardware, load balancing for the web front ends and Office Online servers. Some may be thinking that's way too much infrastructure. We can't afford to license that many servers. So this is where really the custom server role will come into play. So in the custom three tier mineral topology, you'll have a pair of web front ends that benefit from mineral. Then you'll configure custom servers to run a majority of SharePoint service applications to reduce the number of servers. Again, manual configuration of services and monitoring required on these custom servers. And similar to SharePoint 2013, uh, SharePoint admins will have to determine which custom server will run which service. For example, you can have one custom server running central admin and search, and the other custom server running distributed cache. And lastly, you'll have a pair of SQL servers in an always-on availability group. So in the custom highly available topology with search, you'll need two load balance servers with the front end role configured, two custom servers, one running distributed cache, the other running user profile sync and secure store, two servers with the search server role configured, and then two SQL servers configured with the always-on availability group. So the front end and search servers would benefit from the min-roll service auto-provisioning, and this topology is similar to existing three-tier topologies today with dedicated search servers. So how does this impact your SharePoint 2016 upgrade? So min-roll does not free you from service management in SharePoint 2016. You still have to do some plan and design. While MinRoll offers nice stability and scalability and manageability, improvements to 2016 is it's not the only way to deploy uh, 2016. You can still use the DB attach method, and versions prior to 2013 will need to have additional planning and staging for testing. Next, we'll go over using MinRoll in your SharePoint 2016 form. So I've recently installed SharePoint 2016. You'll see MinRoll when you first run the configuration wizard. Um, there's no order in which server you'll need to configure first. You can start with any role. Just note that the first server you configure automatically hosts central administration. With this in mind, you'll typically want to start with the application server. You can also specify a server's role through the SharePoint management shell or through the psconfig utility. So if you're a fan of the management shell, the new local server role parameter allows a server's role to be specified when using the shell or the psconfig command line tool. So existing deployment scripts may have to be updated with this new parameter. So service applications in MinRoll. A minimum topology or custom topology is required first before deploying any service applications. MinRoll doesn't actually automatically create service applications for you. For example, when you configure a new search service application, MinRoll will detect which server in the farm holds the search server role and turn on the search services and configure the search topology for you. MinRoll will also stop service instances automatically for you if you delete a service application. There have been updates in central min. An updated farm services page shows a server's role and MinRoll compliancy status along with currently running services. The compliancy column displays whether the server configuration is in compliance with its server role. If the server role is not in compliance, a fixed link will be provided automatically to reconfigure the server to match the expected configuration of its server role. 
So an updated services on server page now displays a current minroll compliancy status for each service. It displays whether the service instance is in compliance, and if not, a fixed link will be provided. The action column has been changed as well. The link to start or stop a service has been removed for servers that are managed by minroll. The only actionable item is restart for service instances. To start or stop a service, you'll have to go back to the Manage Services page. So I mentioned mineral compliancy in our previous slides. Um, once you configure a server's role, only services appropriate for that role can run on that server. The health analyzer rules and timer jobs to identify when a server isn't mineral compliant. So in this scenario, if Johnny Bad Admin has an application server and decides to start the search admin service, that application server is no longer compliant. On the flip side, if we have Jane Good Admin, who uses a custom server and turns on the search admin service, that server would be compliant as the custom server role can run any service the admin enables. So changing a server's role. Min role isn't set in stone. SharePoint admins can change a server's role through central admin or through the SharePoint management shell. You may need to decommission existing service applications before changing roles. For example, you may want to change a distributed cache server into a custom server that will run distributed cache among other services. It's recommended that you plan your SharePoint 2016 farm so you won't need to change server roles. So we recommend you build out your farm instead of redesigning it. So what about third-party apps? Answer, custom server role. Third-party applications may require certain prerequisites that may not align with the min role. So the custom role may be the best fit. Custom server role is excluded from the min role compliancy checks as it can run any service the administrator configures. So SharePoint 2016 supports backwards compatible behavior or previous versions of SharePoint with the custom role. SharePoint farm admins can assign zero, some, or all servers in the farm the custom role and manage service instances on these servers. If you have an existing deployment script that you don't want to update, you can specify the server role optional parameter when creating a new SharePoint farm. This is done using the psconfig command line tool or the PowerShell commandlet. Thank you everyone. If you have any questions or want to chat more about SharePoint 2016 and MinRoll, feel free to shoot me an email.